Hello, welcome everybody. Hello, welcome everyone. Madam, shall we start? Kapadi, madam. Kapadi, madam. Yes, ma'am. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. Welcome all. A very good morning to one and all. On behalf of Dr. So Indirabai Bhaskara Patak Mahila Mahavidyame, I, Josuna Zauri, extends a warm welcome to all our great uh, guests and delegates to this national level webinar on ethical as aspects of research in the current scenario. Research is essential for the adv advancing knowledge, innovation, improving decision making, addressing social challenges, etc. Without research, we would not have the knowledge, tools and resources necessary to solve many of the challenges facing society today. The researcher, author may create author profile or author ID and there are many tools available to create author ID such as Scopus Author ID, Google Scholar ID, ResearchGate and Orsid ID, etc. It helps in increasing the, your research visibility and citations. So without any further delay, let's begin uh, with our Honorable Principal's address. Now may I request Dr. Sunita Bajpayee Madam to please deliver her Principal's address. Bajpayee Madam. Ma'am, you are not audible. Yes, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Sorry, everyone. And thank you, thank you, Zawli, madam. Thank you, ma'am. So, good morning, and I welcome all in online national webinar on ethical aspects in research in current scenario organized by Dr. Saul Hirabai Bhaskara of Atfak, Dalila Mahavidyalai, Aurangaba, which is situated in Maharashtra. We have very big names in uh, today's seminar. We have big dignitaries. Dr. Suresh Jange, who is a university librarian and NAC coordinator of Gulbarga University. He is our keynote, keynote speaker today. Then we have Dr. Vaishali Khapade, ma'am. This is big name in our mother university, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwadi University. She is a senior professor and head department of library and information science. Sorry, and also a senate member. Dr. K. Viranjale Yellu, sir, who is librarian and head of National Institute of Technology from Warangal. He is going to be speaker in our validatory function today. So I, I welcome one and all on this virtual platform, sir and madam. I wish we all, we all had come here physically and seen our institute. Talking of today's today's topic it seems a bit difficult actually ethics are moral principles these ethics are related in every aspect of life but today we are going to speak of ethics ethics related in research work and that that is special in today's world actually in research ethics means not to harm the participant we are going with the simple definition just for understanding purpose so ethics in research means not to harm participant or any member of the society or for that matter also these ethical guidelines are issued by regulatory authorities from time to time and these has to be followed so that the research work proves its credibility if all these ethics are followed Generally in ethics, in general and in principle, in research also, 
principles of ethics are honesty that applies everywhere integrity objectivity when it comes to research one has to be very careful while carrying on the research that nobody is harmed nobody's interest is everybody's interest is protected one has to be very careful in carrying the conduct uh, in carrying the research the research work has to be confidential and then it has to comply with all the legalities all said and done this is these are all things which everybody should follow but when we talk in simple terms of a simple things as we see research has multiplied a lot in today's world the quantity has multiplied because there are many objectives especially for persons belonging to teaching for field we need it as qualifying criteria for getting our services it is required for class purposes so these are the things which are which is a purpose for which research is undertaken so the quantity is expanded expand actually knowledge is to be found and this is to be useful to the society so it has to be original so the entire process has to be very pious so as i said the quantity has increased but can we talk of quality now i think this quality and the ethics it goes together now see for research we need to have existing knowledge and to go further but again it has to be original what do we do we take lots of things from various sources we take it from books we take it from law from google from websites okay fine that's okay but the ethical thing is that when you are taking somebody's material taking somebody's citation give them due credit recognize their knowledge, their work till now if you do that that is ethical if you don't that is as good as intellectual chori work but so to say when you are proceeding for the research what i feel is that you collect the existing material see what is the what is being done till now take up that point and begin from there go further find out what are the gaps so that it becomes useful to the society so you are taking existing material if it is mentioned that you've taken from these sources it becomes ethical if not it is otherwise you should see to it that the research is for not other purpose but for the usefulness for of some part of the society or some people it has to be useful so it has to be new what is done is that every research is done mostly for personal benefit is that ethical one should ask oneself and work is done on the same topic again and again maybe because it easy maybe because the material is available and there could be many more reasons but then doing this are we serving basic purpose which is required for the research i feel when we are talking of ethics in research we should be asking ourselves all these basic questions and if this questions are positive then i think we are fulfilling the ethics as i have said earlier we have very big personalities who would be addressing us in today's session so to discuss all everything in detail in the technology technicality i leave it for our guests and i request jawde madam to take over and carry on for further proceedings thank you one and all and i welcome every participant on this virtual ground of dr so indira bhai bhaskar of patak mahila mahavidyalay thank you thank you one and all thank you ma'am for the encouraging and inspirational words madam welcome virendra sir uh, sir please unmute yourself virendra sir 
Ranjan, hello, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah, madam. Yes, yes. Thank you. Good sir. morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Now I invite Kiran Bora, ma'am, to introduce our keynote speaker, an eminent personality, respected Dr. Surya Jangi, sir. Over to you, Kiran, madam. Yes, madam. Thank you, madam. Good morning, everyone. I am Kiran Bhore. I am here to give a short introduction of our today's guest, Dr. Suresh Jange. Dr. Suresh Jange, sir, is a librarian and NAC coordinator of Gulbarwa University, Karnataka. Basically, sir is a commerce and management graduate. Sir started his career at Starlight Industries, Wapi, Silvasa, Dew Daman as a management executive and later moved to library science. Dr. Jange sir was awarded gold medal in bachelor in library science and masters in library science. In sir day. has pursued their PhD in, in 2004. Day. He passed the UGC net JRF exam and ECDL mm -hmm. certification from mm -hmm. British Computer Society UK. Sir has 25 years of professional experience. He is a coordinator of Influminate Center for e Shodha Sindhu, Shodha Ganga and INDAC project. Sir has completed major research project by UGC on development of e-content on, on traditional knowledge and folk wisdom of Hyderabad, Karnataka region in 2012. Sir also completed a project on open air green library and RFID technology in 2019-20. Dr. Suresh Jange sir has presented conference paper at Nanya Technological University, Singapore, Karolinska University, Stockholm, Sweden and Washington, USA. Sir has published 120 research paper in national and international journals, fast track volume and conferences. Under the guidance of Suresh Jange sir, 12 student completed PhD and 18 student completed MPhil degree. At present, sir is a president of Indian Library Association, president of Karnataka University Library Association and president of Hyderabad Karnataka Library Association. Dr. Suresh Jange sir has received Best Librarian Award from Government of Karnataka in 2012 and also awarded ILA Gidwani Deshpande Best Academic Librarian Award on 23rd November 2017 by Indian Library Association at Baba Sahib Ambedkar University, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. At the last, I wanted to say thanks to Orgar for giving me the opportunity to introduce such a knowledgeable and intelligent personality. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Kira madam. It's my absolute pleasure to call upon Honorable Dr. Suresh Jangi sir to deliver his keynote address. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, very good morning uh, to all of you. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are. Okay. Uh, Honorable uh, Principal of this great college and the organizer, uh, Dr. Vasudha Purohit, madam, uh, Dr. Sunita, madam, the convener and dynamic uh, librarian, uh, Dr. Josna Javale, madam, uh, distinguished uh, resource persons, and uh, very Close of my associate, uh, Dr. Vaisali Kapade, madam, the head of the department from BAMU, and uh, my very good friend and a very popular personality in agricultural libraries, Dr. K. Viranjali, sir, presently serving as a librarian at NIT Warangal. All the esteemed teaching faculty and non teaching faculty of this esteemed college, library professionals, participants, and my dear friends. At the outset, uh, I wish to congratulate the esteemed college, IBP Mahira Kala Mahavidyalaya, for having chosen the very apt and very relevant topic 
of organizing this webinar particularly on ethical aspects of uh, research in an academic environment which is uh, very much essential in the 21st century see we are all talking about ethics ethics in all different aspects of our life ethics in library ethics in a college ethics in a university or ethics in any corporate sector so wherever we talk about any quality and excellence we talk about ethics ethics needs to be practiced rather than preaching bade bade baatein vada pav khate bolna acha lagta hai ethics like of philosophy wo oh, hum to we have to follow so ethics of research are tum bolte ho to practice karna zaruri hai so what is important in a research is ethics maybe like we do not today why the plagiarism has come because of the concept of ethics ethics needs to be practiced in person rather than a preaching okay hum wo practice karna zaruri hai rather than a preaching that should be kept in mind see research you know research is a life blood of modern research so whenever you know you during this current century there have been a tremendous growth of information literature resulting in information explosion and this information explosion leads to different types of information resources may be a print or electronic resources see there has been a tremendous growth there is no doubt about that but what is the concern in the current 21st century we only the quality and excellence see we are today we are every college and university is going for a nap why because to ensure that the quality and excellence is prevailed in the college or university even day so in that context ethics is one of the important component of our research that should be practiced today by all the academic and research community okay so today uh, i am not going to touch upon uh, the ethics in research because yeah, the, that particular topic will be dealt by my very good friend and a senior professor professor khapadia madam so i'll be touching upon the my my keynote address in general perspective about the academic library ladies and gentlemen we are living in this fascinating time of a change and a promise today information is considered as a life blood of a modern research without information there cannot be any development information is considered as a fourth need of a human beings after air water food and a shelter so information we the librarian for the preservers of this information and the knowledge for posterity and use we the librarians have the passion of identifying selecting acquiring maintaining and disseminating information to the society at large we the librarians are the are the people who really bring from the darkness to light and see we are like trying our level best to enlighten the society with the information we are in no way less than any professionals in the world maybe a doctor maybe a engineer we are in no way less than anyone but only thing is we need to practice what we preach abhi hum ye jo bade baatein kar rahe hai na hum wo practice mein lagana bahut zaruri hai तो हर आदमी यही बोलेगा लाइब्रेरी तो हम इतना काम करते हैं हमारा बड़ा लाइब्रेरी है हमारा पास प्रिंट कलेक्शन है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक रिपोर्ट है कंप्यूटर है सब कुछ है व्हेन एवरीथिंग इज अवेलेबल इन द लाइब्रेरी बट द सर्विस इज आल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज नॉट दैट नो जस्ट वी टॉक मोर एंड मोर अबाउट डिजिटल लाइब्रेरी एंड प्रैक्टिस लेस एंड लेस अबाउट द डिजिटल लाइब्रेरी दैट इज नॉट एडवाइजेबल इन दिस ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी ladies and gentlemen information and communication technology has been the greatest innovation of mankind knowingly or unknowingly intentionally or unintentionally we have been making use of this technology in every aspect of our life see and we should understand that we everyone is talking about technology in library and technology is not the ultimate yeah technology is the only a source it's a medium today hey, everyone the librarian when he enters into the library chamber he start he open the computer and i'll start operating the system are yaar tumhara kaam only computer use karne ka hai ki there are other reasons you know there are so many things you know we should try our level best to come close to our users the you know we have to bridge the gap between the teaching faculty and the and the students for that our important culture is 
how we have to bring our users to the library see the major challenge for the librarian is how to attract the users to the library all the teaching faculty are many people are telling are yaar tumhara library bada hai technology everything is available but where are the users users are not available what effort you are taking what measures you are taking to ensure that more and more users are coming to the library and making use of your library facility and services mir possessing all the technological infrastructure all the information resources in the library without use is of no use ye hum sochna bahut zaruri hai okay ki library for, for that normally what we say are yaar badalna change hum badalna chahiye badalna chahiye are change is the constant change to ho, hota hi rahega 10 saal jo tha abhi nahi hai so change is always there बदलो बदलो अरे यार खुद को पहला बदलो बाद में दूसरे को बदलो सो दैट शुड बी अवर फंडा एंड टुडे लाइब्रेरी इज प्लेइंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द हायर एजुकेशन सिस्टम एंड टुडे यू जस्ट नेम नैक ये नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी ओके सो इन दिस हु आर द मेजर प्लेयर प्लेइंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इट इज द लाइब्रेरियन देयर इज अ सर्वे कंडक्टेड इन कर्नाटक फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट डिग्री कॉलेजेस दैट more than 50% of the college librarians are occupying the post of iqc director nep coordinator and a nac coordinator what does it indicate ye kya matlab hai this shows that the librarians are on par excellence librarians have the capacity to provide various sources and they can also render services beyond librarianship charge within the four walls of a librarian is fine उसके बाद भी एज एन पी कोऑर्डिनेटर एज ए यू एस एम पी कोऑर्डिनेटर एज ए आई के सी कोऑर्डिनेटर एज ए आई टी कोऑर्डिनेटर वी आर डूइंग दैट फॉर टफ सर्विस ओके दिस शोज दैट वी आर रियली इंटेलिजेंट वेरी वेरी इंटेलिजेंट आजकल जमाने में क्या हो गया बहुत लोग आई के पीछे भाग रहे हैं तो ये सोचते हैं कि आई टी अल्टीमेट है फिर आई today the philosophy of librarianship the philosophy of what dr s r ranganathan said collection organization maintenance and dissemination of information that is relevant even today what has changed the mode of delivery the mode of access to information has changed because of the impact of information technology let me tell you there are the two important transformation that we are experiencing today one is there is a paradigm changes in the attitude of a users attitude of a teaching faculty attitude of a principal attitude of a management so that we have to take care wo logon ka attitude change ki hua to hum kya karna chahiye usko humko dimag lagana padega second of course it is the information technology for the technology how best we implement the technology in library is a challenge that depending upon the budget position of your college or a university that you can do it you see hum log bolte hain are rfid technology you have to implement in the library hai bhaiya main kar sakta hu paisa kahan hai paisa feko tamasha dekho tum paisa do as a principal you provide us fund and we will ensure that our library will be totally automated see we should be very very practical today the challenges of quality of teaching kitna log teaching ke class abhi hum jo classes hai kitna kitna teaching faculty log wo occupy karke classes le rahe hain see there are so many major issues at a higher level and library though we consider it as a heart of the university campus your temple of our learning but it is considered as a secondary level this is a fact i am telling you because i am serving in the gulbarga university as a university librarian nac coordinator it coordinator director of remedial coaching center director of research studies jitna kaam kare to bhi kya ho jata hai you are a non teaching bolke that mental setup rehta hai unko goli maro kuch farak nahi padta hai hamara kaam karne ka hai and we should prove ourselves that we are really talented and we our knowledge is very much required for the development of the college or the university that should be our fanta 
अगर ज्यादा आपका दिमाग दुबरा ऊपर तुम लगाए तो तुम फेल हो जाएंगे तो अवर मोटो इज टू प्रोवाइड द बेस्ट पॉसिबल सर्विस टू द यूजर कम्युनिटी विद इन द लिमिटेशन ऑफ द सिस्टम ओके एंड टूडे सी वी हैव प्रूव आवर वर्क इवन ड्यूरिंग कोविड आल्सो इन द ड्यूरिंग कोविड इफ सी वी द लाइब्रेरियंस हैव नॉट एक्सेप्टेड दिस एज अ चैलेंज बट ड्यूरिंग कोविड 19 We have accepted COVID as an opportunity for the librarians. ये हमको opportunity दिया कि तो हम prove करें कैसा आप information disseminate करते users को क्योंकि कोई लोग user आपको पास का पास नहीं आ रहे. So in that context, we proved that we can render our services through WhatsApp group, through online, through email, through attachment. So we have proved all sort of technology. मैं ये बोलना चाहता हूँ कि पहले जब कोविड आया जब हमको ऑनलाइन ऐसा वेबिनार क्या है बोल के मालूम नहीं था यार ऑनलाइन पहले सोचते थे ऑनलाइन वेबिनार बोले तो यार बहुत अच्छा बड़ा सॉफ्टवेयर होगा इंस्टॉल करना पड़ेगा और ऑनलाइन क्लास लेते हैं बहुत सारा लोग रह रहे हैं आई बोल के हम सोच रहे थे मगर टूरिंग कोविड नाइन्टीन या उवरी लाइब्रेरियन याम सो फेमिलियर दैट ये ऑनलाइन वेबिनार है पार्ट ऑफ और अकेडमिक एंड रिसर्च एक्टिविटी हमने पूर्व प्रूव करा कि कौन सा भी टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी रहने दो हम उसको अडॉप्ट करेंगे हम उसको सर्विस देंगे सो दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव प्रूव्ड बियॉन्ड डाउट ओके सो टुडे ऑल सॉर्ट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी आर बीइंग यूज बाय द लाइब्रेरियंस टू रेंडर सर्विसेज एंड लेट मी टेल यू सी टुडे द ऑल यू नो लाइक वी आर आवर सर्विसेज हैव बिकम मोर ऑफ अ वर्चुअल सर्विसेज so normally when we look at a college so only few collections few racks are there few collections are there maybe because of a lack of budget they may not be having a, a automation system or a, some sort of a web enabled services but they can do it provided that facility would be given by the principal to the librarian i saw both the librarian say in the maharashtra like dr khalbande hai a bada bada librarian pe dr veer sir hai dr subhash chavane aur dahi baatein sir hai ये सब स्टालवर्ड्स है लाइब्रेरी साइंस फील्ड में तो उनका हम हेल्प लेके हमारा लाइब्रेरी भी हम ऐसा बड़ा कुछ आप इनोवेटिव कर सकते हैं ये टेक्नोलॉजी एक ही चीज नहीं है मैं इस पर बहुत डिग्री कॉलेजेस को नॉर्मली ये बोलता हूँ भैया तुम्हारा पास बैठने के लिए कभी बोलते हैं सर बैठने के लिए चेयर नहीं है हमारे पास तो ये पाँच दस हजार बुक्स है हमारे पास कंप्यूटर नहीं है हमारे एक ही ले लू वो सोल सोल सोल्जर ये क्यों हूँ सर मुझे क्यों नहीं है कौन भी नहीं है मैं कैसा करूँ मैं यही बोलता हूँ भैया चिंता मत करो तुम एक ही लाइब्रेरी नहीं ना परवा नहीं अच्छा जितने भी है तुम्हारे पास कंप्यूटर नहीं छोड़ो तुम्हारे यूनिफी पेज के लाई ना तुम एक लैपटॉप परचेज करो चालीस हजार यू जस्ट पे इट एंड गेट द लैपटॉप और सिस्टम ऑन यूर ओन एंड जो भी आप करना इनोवेटिव करना चाहते हैं वो यूजिंग यूर ओन लैपटॉप You render because there are plenty of free resources are available on the internet. बच्चे को क्या चाहिए? Students को क्या चाहिए? कौन सा free resources कहाँ मिलता है? E-book कहाँ मिलता है? E-journal कहाँ मिलता है? Okay, question papers है, notes है. आप scan करो, scan करके अपने system पर रखो. और जो भी जो बच्चे आएगा, उनको आप वो system बताओ and you render it. जिनका पास और डिजिटल लाइब्रेरी है बड़ा सेटअप पे उनका उनका चलता है वो वो नो प्रॉब्लम बट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द डिग्री कॉलेज लाइब्रेरी वेयर द नॉर्मली इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ मर्मरिंग इज मेरे पास वो नहीं है ये नहीं है बोल के उनो भी क्या है थोड़ा अमाउंट इफ दे स्पेंड दे कैन डू वंडर्स फॉर दैट पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड इज मैटर्स एंड ऑल द टाइम Saying that uh, murmuring कभी भी हम जाते हैं सर यूनिवर्सिटी में आप सारा काम करते हैं आपका अलग रहता है डिग्री कॉलेज में काम करते हैं हमारा अलग रहता है कुछ नहीं भैया हम तुम भाई भाई कुछ नहीं ज्यादा कुछ फर्क नहीं है हमारा भी प्रॉब्लम मैनेजमेंट रहता है हम तो हमारे पास भी बजट नहीं है हमारे पास भी स्टाफ नहीं है जो है जो भगवान दिया है वो जितना भी है उससे थोड़ा प्यार से मोहब्बत से आप सर्विस दो when normally you know like we have seen you know the librarian sitting in the corner of the room in the separate chamber and saying that i am a very young the university librarian i am a degree college librarian ye tum corner pe baith ke service diye to nahi chalega 
क्योंकि यू शुड कम टू द फ्रंट एंड द मोमेंट वेन फॉर्मी एंटर इन टू द लाइब्रेरी देर शुड बी फॉर्म पर्सन हु शुड टेक केयर इन द सेंस फिर जब उसको क्या चाहिए क्या नहीं फॉर्मी शुड बी देर यू आर फिटिंग एज यूनिवर्सिटी लाइब्रेरी यू आर फिटिंग फॉर्मेर इन द कॉर्नर तो जो जो थोड़ा लोग आएंगे जाएंगे उधर रैक्स में देखेंगे वो बुक देखते हैं नहीं मिला तो चले जाएंगे आजकल का स्टूडेंट पूछते भी नहीं ये नहीं मिला सोर कहाँ करना बोल के सो दैट एटीट्यूड इज दैट फॉर दैट वी द लाइब्रेरियन शुड कम टू द फ्रंट एंड द मोमेंट व्हेन स्टूडेंट एंटर इन द लाइब्रेरी यू शुड एंश्योर दैट भैया आपको क्या चाहिए ओके ये इंफॉर्मेशन चाहिए ये इधर मिलता है ये बुक चाहिए आ जाओ इधर मिलता है अगर समझो वो बुक आपके पास नहीं है so then you should call him okay you want that book na come here i will make a phone call to my friend who is in the another college ek baar phone karo bada letter is hai bolo are mera student hai bahut sincere hai usko ye book nahi mil raha to aapka paas rahe to thoda jhara kar ko bhejo to jab un tum unke sath in front of the user if you make a phone call and tell him the student ko kya lagta hai aur ye bhaiya hamara library kitna dynamic hai mere liye dusre ko phone kiya तो वो इंफॉर्मेशन भेज रहे इंफॉर्मेशन मिले या ना मिले दैट इज सेकेंडरी बट दैट दैट डायनामिज्म इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यूर फैकल्टी लाइफ एंड लाइब्रेरियन कोलेबोरेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन द एकेडमिक सेटअप क्या हो जाते हैं नॉर्मली वी ऑफ सीन द टीचिंग फैकल्टी नेवर कम टू द लाइब्रेरी तो उसके लिए क्या करना पड़ेगा अरे डिग्री कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी अरे यार फोन करो भैया आ जाओ तो सर जी आ जाओ चाय पे उठे आपका चाय पीने के लिए आ जाओ बैठो थोड़ा देखो नया बुक है हमारे पास इतना है इतना यूज करो बच्चे को बताओ फिर दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ समथिंग वी शुड डू इनोवेटिव नहीं तो क्या होता है हम क्या बोलते हैं अरे मैं फोन भी नहीं आ रहा मैं क्या करूँ फोन भी नहीं आ रहे है तो भी अगर लाइब्रेरी को नहीं आ रहे हैं तो हम क्या बोलते हैं अरे उनको प्रॉब्लम मेरा मेरा पास तो सब कुछ है तो ये बोले से नहीं चलता वी शुड आल्सो मेक सम एफर्ट टू एंश्योर दैट वी अट्रैक्ट द यूजर ओके फॉर दैट यू नो सी वी नीड टू हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ इनोवेशन लेट मी टेल यू वेरी रिसेंटली वन वन एग्जाम्पल दैट वी हैव डन इट इन द यूनिवर्सिटी लाइब्रेरी ओके तो ऑल द टाइम वी वी यूज टू स्पेंड क्लोज टूगेदर ऑफ अमाउंट फॉर अ बुक्स अभी हमने क्या किया है हम बोलते हैं हमारा मैनेजमेंट वाइस चांसलर सर जी हमको ज्यादा पैसा नहीं चाहिए ओके हमको टेक्स्ट बुक चाहिए बच्चों के लिए हम सब लोग इंग्लिश इंग्लिश परचेज करते हैं हमारा रीजन लैंग्वेज कनाडा है रीजन लैंग्वेज महार मराठी रहता है तुम सब इतना इंग्लिश कल इंग्लिश बुक कलेक्शन डाल के परचेज करें तो कौन यूज करेगा है ना तो वॉट वी हैव डेन इज फी नाउ वी हैव स्टार्टेड ए पॉलिसी टू प्रोक्योर ओनली दो बुक्स मे बी इन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज और कनाडा लैंग्वेज समझो टू टू कॉपीज ओनली टेक्स्ट बुक ओके हर डिपार्टमेंट के लिए समझो चार सेमिस्टर है तुमको पचास बुक चाहिए तो पचास बुक जो चाहते हैं वो पचास बुक परचेज करते हैं वो पचास बुक डिपार्टमेंट पर रख छोड़ते हैं क्योंकि स्टूडेंट्स आ रहे नहीं इधर है ना पचास बुक वो वन कॉपी देर वन कॉपी इन द लाइब्रेरी आवर पर्पज इज टू एंश्योर दैट द बुक्स दैट वी परचेज आर बींग यूटिलाईज बाई द स्टूडेंट्स वो हमारा मेन इंटेंशन है ये नहीं कि सब कुछ हमारे पास परचेज करके इधर रख के अगर यूजर नहीं आ रहा है तो बिकॉज स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो वी कैनॉट ब्लेम देम टेन टू फाइव दैट दे आर बिजी आफ्टर दैट वी आर क्लोजिंग अवर लाइब्रेरी ना फॉर दैट व्हाट वी नीड टू डू वन कॉपी ऑफ द टेक्स्ट बुक काइंडली प्रोवाइड टू द डिपार्टमेंट देर इट सेल्फ फी वेन एवर दे फाइंड टाइम दे कैन रीड देयर ओनली आर वेन देर फ्री दे कैन कम टू द लाइब्रेरी एंड अनदर वन इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द लाइब्रेरी वॉट वी डिट इज you demand a book we will purchase it so normally what happens you know we, uh, we don't purchase from amazon we don't purchase the book from the flipkart because i'm talking from the state university degree college and the uh, state university not from the nit or iit they can purchase a book from any part of the world even through online but hamara pas kya hota hai samjho if any party anybody ask for a particular book if i purchase from the amazon or a flipkart audit wale aayega क्या कैसा परचेज करे तुम कैसा पेमेंट करे है ना तो फॉर दैट व्हाट वी डिड वन सिंपल विजन ऑफ द लाइब्रेरी आप कौन सा भी एक बुक पूछो यू डिमांड ए बुक वी विल परचेज इंस्टेंटली वी हैव मेड वन फिंडिकेट आइटम इन द फिंडिकेट काउंसिल दैट व्हेन एवर एनी पर्टिकुलर बुक इज डिमांडेड बाय एनी यूजर वी परचेज ऑनलाइन एंड गेट इट 
to the user directly and there on the process everything will be done the amount the cost involved in purchasing that will be reimbursed from the contingency the simple thing it was approved in the syndicate so accordingly what happens see we are uh, going through this sort of a phase wherein uh, you demand and we provide ये सिंपल है क्योंकि क्या हो जाता है कॉलेज में और यूनिवर्सिटी में ये जो एक लाख दो साल लाख बुक्स में वो जो पर्टिनेंट बुक नॉर्मली मिलने का थोड़ा डिफिकल्ट रहता है एट दैट टाइम व्हाट वी कैन डू इफ वी कैन रेंडर अवर बेस्ट सर्विसेज विद इन द लिमिटेशन ऑफ द सिस्टम आई नो माई टाइम इज ओनली ट्वेंटी मिनट जस्ट टू मिनट्स आई टेक एंड वाइंड अप लेट मी टेल यू की द मेजर चैलेंज ऑफ अर लाइब्रेरी इज हाउ टू अट्रैक्ट यूजर्स टू द कम्युनिटी हाउ टू अट्रैक्ट अवर यूजर्स टू द लाइब्रेरी सेकेंड इज हाउ टू गेट फंडिंग फ्रॉम द मैनेजमेंट दीज टू चैलेंजेस आर देर ओके फॉर दैट दिस चैलेंजेस विल बी देर एंड दिस विल ओनली ओवरकम ओनली बाई मीन्स ऑफ अवर डायनामिज्म ऑफ अ लाइब्रेरियनशिप चुप आप कोई बैठे जो भी बोलेगा सुनते रहे कुछ नहीं होता यू शुड शो यूर स्मार्टनेस okay that dynamism dynamism is required for a librarian okay zindagi aasan nahi hota aasan karna padta hai usse kuch andaaz se kuch nazar andaaz se all the time hum bolte hain main itna chhana hu itna kaam karta hu aur abhi samjho holiday pe college mein kaun bhi nahi aata main akela aata hu aur hum hum itna kaam karte hum kuch aata recognition kaun bhi nahi deta अरे यार कौ रिकग्नेशन दे नहीं दे उनको गोली मारो काम करो ऐसा कि ये पहचान बन जाए हर कदम ऐसा चलो कि हम निशाना बन जाए ये जिंदगी तो हर कोई जीत जी ले गए यार ये जिंदगी तो हर कोई जी ले गए यार मगर जी जिंदगी जियो ऐसा कि हम मिसाल बन जाए दिस इज द फंड ऑफ लाइब्रेरी Thank you very much uh, to one and all for giving me this opportunity to be part of uh, this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I request all the delegates to please switch on their um, camera so we can take screenshot. Please switch on your camera. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening and insightful lecture. Yes. May I now request Dr. Minal Shri Giriwar. to introduce the research person respected dr vaishali kapade madam thank you madam am i audible to everyone yes. good morning everyone i dr meena shrigiriwar head department of sanskrit of the post college is really privileged and feeling honored to introduce our resource person dr vaishali kapade madam since she belongs to our mother university that is dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university is distinguished personality dr vaishali khapa de madam is working as a senior professor and head of the department of library and information science and in charge head pali and buddhism department dr bamo senior member and former management council member of bamo former director Gautam Buddha Adhyayan Kendra of Dr Bamu she is a chairman of BOS Library and Information Science she has total 27 years of teaching experience for post graduation she has published more than 250 research papers in various national and international journals madam has presented 120 papers in national as well as international conferences madam has written 14 books she has h index 13 and i10 index 14 with 440 citation received she is the chairman bos library and information science dr bamu aurangabad member of bos mahatma gandhi mission university aurangabad she is the chief editor of world research journal of library and information science and an associate editor of national journal that is horizon by annual research journal an associate editor of bonfire international journal of data mining she worked as a guest editor for world international journal for library and information science bioinfo publications she is the member of library and information science forum of international researcher of american research institute for policy development uk she is the life member of indian library association 
Indian Association of Teachers in Library and Information Science, Indian Association of Special Libraries and Information Centers, Management Library Network, Damukta. She is resource person for various refresher courses, orientation courses, and seminars also. She has been awarded as Best Teacher Award by BAMU, the Teacher Teachers Association in 2010. Her area of specialization are bibliometrics, library management, non-book material, ICT, digitization, knowledge management, library, library automation. She is examiner and paper setter for set examination in library and information science. She has visited Malaysia, Singapore, Bangkok, and Sri Lanka for paper presentation. She has been internationally recognized as a scientist in International Edis Scientific Index 2021, 22, and 23, as well as honored by the Researcher Research Professor Award for 2016-17 by Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Maratwara University, Aurangabad. She has been honored by International Gold Star Award. Bharat Jyoti Award, Best Citizen of India Award in 2011, and Kartabgar Mahila Puraskar, Dhamma Kanya Puraskar in 2012. She was the course coordinator of five refresher courses in library and information science, as well as coordinator of three training programs in library automation and coordinator of the ICSSR New Delhi, sponsored a research methodology course for PhD students. She is the PhD guide and eight students are working and 21 students have been awarded PhD degree. Four international candidates from Yemen are also working under her guidance, which of two have been awarded PhD degree. She is guided more than 80 students at MLISC and 58 students at MC level. She is the referee and also editorial board member of various peer-reviewed national and international journals published from UK and USA. Such a huge bio data. I would like I would like to say special thanks to our organizer for inviting such a young, brilliant, hardworking, and successful personality for today's webinar. I request Dr. Vaishali Khapa de Madam, please enlighten us with your knowledge and huge work experience. Over to you, Vaishali, madam. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, first, let me share my screen. Okay. I'm requesting once again to the delegates Meanwhile, please uh, turn on your uh, cameras so we can take screenshot. Screen is visible. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, yes madam. You can put in a presentation mode, madam. Okay, sir. Yes, madam. So first of all, first of all, let me thank Dr. Vas Vasudha Purohit, ma'am. Principal and the organizing secretary, Dr. IBP Mahila Kala Mahavidyalaya Aurangabad, the convener, Josna Jawale, ma'am, for inviting me as a resource person for this national webinar on ethical aspects of research in the current scenario. I welcome respected Dr. Viranjanelu, sir, Dr. Suresh Jange, sir and all the participants of the webinar. I also thank Dr. Minal 
Sringrivar Madam for introducing me in such a good manner. Thank you, ma'am. So I welcome you all for this uh, webinar. The topic of my presentation is online research profiling tools to enhance research visibility. I hope the screen is visible to all. Yes, ma'am. So friends, as you all know that for the teachers in the CAS promotions or for the research students, it is necessary to publish the papers in the reputed journals. So after publishing the papers, it is very necessary to have the research visibility or otherwise the impact of a research will not be counted in the manner what we want. So for this research visibility is very important and generally what we do after the presentation, we forget about the paper. Once we publish the paper, but after that we have to take care how it should be visible to all and how our research impact will be there on another research scholar. So for this we have to take care of all these things. And that is why this presentation is important, very important for creating a digital footprint. And that's why this presentation, presentation is important to all the faculty members, as well as the research students and the librarians. So friends, as you all know that in this digital age, digital identity is very important and for creating a digital footprint you may be observing here that various research ids so uh, my presentation is visible yes ma'am yes ma'am your no, slides are not moving madam slides are not moving yeah only first slide only it is going So here yeah, in this digital age, digital identity is very important and for creating our digital footprint, you may be observing here that various research IDs are there. So for what purpose all these research IDs are there? Like, so now it is visible. Yes, madam. First uh, slide is visible. Okay. So various research IDs are there. So my question to all the participants that whether you all have the research IDs, you have created your research IDs. And if not, after this presentation, you will be able to create all these research IDs so that whatever research you are doing, it may be very good research or it may be a good research. We can't say, we can't measure the research, but whatever citations we are getting from that citation count, we are generally saying that, yes, this research will be valuable to the other research scholars. So for this, you have to create your research ID so that you can showcase your publications to all. So friends, as you all know that there is very limited time given to me so I'll be a bit fast, okay? So as you all know, for all the professionals or even all the faculty members or the librarians to enhance their image or to enhance the identity of our profession, we have to create a research ID. So to all the participants, or it is very good thing for the institution also, or for your personal promotions also. But if you don't have your research ID, you have to create your research ID. So every research journey 
as you all know it is a very unique journey and therefore every researcher has its own limitations he has its own advantages for doing the research once we start a research journey then only we can start writing the publication so it may be from our thesis or it may be from our research project or it may be from our individual research so it is a map not a route so when you compare your past publications with the recent one you will find a great difference so self evaluation is also very important madam first slides are not moving madam only in first slide only it is please see madam once again now sir it is moving not moving madam sir any problem is there okay problem now it is moving madam okay okay sir now sir it is moving yes ma'am so when yes, we I compare the past publications with the recent one you will find a great difference so self evaluation it is very important so that you can identify how your research will be unique and how you can create your personal identity or how you can create your personal research brand whatever research you are doing you have to go into the depth of the research and create your personal brand and so that you may be familiar before going to the depth of the research so how to enhance the research visibility that we will be going into the depth of that open access so it may be free of cost or or other access barriers can be avoided here because sometimes what happens whatever subscribe databases we are taking so if our library is having a subscription then only we can have access if we don't have the subscription then we may not be using that resources so for this open access is very important because anybody can access the resources we have to also take the help of these scholarly publications like how to create how to evaluate the scholarly content how to designate it to the scholarly community then we have to also provide the help of this scholarly publication to the faculty members then the research impact measurement generally this research impact will be calculated based on the research counts or you can say h index you may be familiar with the h index the journal impact factor is also there so we have to also give the training to the faculty members how to calculate the citation count or even some basic concept of citation count or even some basic concept concept of that citation count what will be the h index how the impact factor of journals can be calculated so like that the users requirement we have to provide the services of research consultancy and etc so after publishing once we publish the paper where it is in a very good journal then it should also be take care about the paper that it should be noticed to the others so for what purpose this paper should get noticed to the others for the citation count it is very good if the paper is getting noticed by the others so not only publishing a high quality paper in the scientific journal is the only half way towards receiving the citations in the future but we have to also take care about the various research tools if you are publishing in a very good high quality impact factor you may be forgetting about that paper but if that paper is also known to all if the paper is available in open access platform then it will be having some impact on the others because anybody can access that paper so for this you can use some research tools 
and which will allow to increase the research impact of your research so for that also you have to take care about the research tools so let us see what are the research tools kapad uh, madam yes uh, madam please uh, press f5 f5 so your screen will be maximized okay ma'am Thank you. F5 function. Screenshot software. That's it. Okay, ma'am. Now it is visible. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is okay, ma'am. It's visible now. It's oh, visible okay. now. Okay. So, why this research visibility? What is the role of research publications? So, it plays a very important role in national or as well as international ranking of any institution or university. So, for this, we have to take care of the research visibility and even. for the personal promotions if the personal promotions are due for which research publications are must and if you want to submit a project for any funding agency so they ask you about your publications or research credit so for this also you have to take care about the research publications as well as assessment of research quality and excellence is also so it all depends upon the research publications and if you are taking care of the research visibility there are chances of getting the accessibility of the papers published papers and you will be getting a high number of citations and there are chances of being read your paper will be read by the others as well as your paper will be cited and there are also chances of research collaborations so for this research visibility is very important so whatever research we are doing actually to serve the society for that also you have to designate your works for example when we see uh, in pharmacy professionals if they have discovered something new formulas for or uh, something medicine like during this covid situation if anybody has developed the formula for vaccination then they will also go for the commercialization so whatever research you are doing it it should be visible to all so that all these points can be fulfilled so let us see about the research impact and research matrix so research impact and metric means it is generally referred to the effect of research outside the academia it may be for the economy it may be for the society or it may be for the culture so based on that we are calculating the citation matrix and which are commonly used type of method for calculating the impact of a research and these citation matrix are useful to the researchers to help them to identify the key publications and the key authors in the field so therefore these are the three segments of research impact first that is article impact article impact second is the author impact and third is the journal impact that is journal matrix so all these three matrix are very important so let us go into the depth of all these three matrix so first is journal matrix so how all this is calculated journal matrix based on the citations we are calculating all these journal matrix so the data can be collected through google scholar or it can be collected through web of science or scopus so once you publish the paper in this scopus or web of science index journal so then it is automatically calculated the citation matrix is automatically calculated but you if your paper is available in the google scholar it is also 
automatically call calculated only the thing is there google scholar it provides the edge index and item index also so they are providing so for this you have to create your google scholar id so that your research once you publish your research in the electronic format then automatically it will be calculated or it will be extracted by the google scholar all bibliographical data or bibliographical details will be extracted by the google scholar so based on that the journal metrics also can be calculated great web of science they also provide the journal citation reports and which is ranked by the eugene garfield means eugene factors and which is ranked by the eugene factors and the impact factor it can also be available in eugene factor dot org so scopus is also providing the uh, journal metrics and based on the sgr or you can say this snip s n i p snip or the site source or this is site source so they are also using how this journal metrics can be calculated based on the very good databases like web of science or scopus and google scholar they are calculating this journal metrics so journal met metrics is nothing but within that published journal how many articles are cited by the others based on that this journal metrics can be calculated and generally it is access based on the impact factor so that is called as journal metrics which is called as impact factor so we have, have also this national uh, level ugc care reference list of journal quality journals for agriculture that is nas rating and here ugc care nowadays this is compulsion for our promotions that you have to publish the qualitative paper in the ugc care reference list of quality journals so based on this all these impact factors can nowadays be calculated second thing is author metrics so this author metrics can be calculated based on the citation metrics and we are collecting the data from the scopus web of science and google scholar so they are providing the author metrics author metric it is calculated by citations and h index and sometimes it is also called calculated by orchid id so once you create your orchid id automatically all these metrics you will get it in the automatic way so you don't have to bother about how to calculate the citation or how to calculate the h index so only the thing is you have to create your research profile so that citation metrics can be calculated so nowadays all this metric is very used which is also called as alternative metrics and which is combined by social networking sites like academia so this is alternative metrics and which is combined by this academia and uh, nowadays uh, alternative metrics which is combined by social networking sites like academia research gate you can say or this impact story also impact story also or you can see this kudos kudos is also there using they are also using and only the thing is as the faculty member you have to take care about how to register yourself for all these things so that your impact factor will be calculated based on your research visibility so then there is another way to measure the author impact based on the documents count these are the methods which traditionally it was followed like document citation count and count with h index h index is also there item index is also there even web of science is also providing 
Scopus is also providing edge index facility. Google Scholar is also providing this edge index item facility. So if you have a access, like your library may be subscribing Web of Science or Scopus or other databases. So your library is subscribing it, you have a database access, then you can search for the particular course collection. And there you will find this H index and item index. So if you conduct the search on Web of Science, then you can see that how many times that particular author is cited. So this is Web of Science. So you can see that how many times this uh, author is cited. That is 1370 yeah. times. This particular uh, author, this particular article is being cited by others. So it is counted that this is article and this is the impact. Means whatever article, this is, this is the article, this is the impact. So whatever article you have written that article is used by number of authors based on that this is calculated so all these calculations are done automatically then scopus is also there based on that they are providing the citation count so scopus is also there Based on that, they are providing the article count. So even Google Scholar, once you create the account in the Google Scholar, the article impact. So here you can see that if you search for the artificial intelligence, so here you can see that cited by 5084. So means the article is cited by 5084 research scholars. So this means that the impact of the article is very good. That how many times that particular article is being cited by the others. So based on that, you can value the particular article. So this is the Google Scholar citation impact. So then the article impact, if you have a digital library of IEEE, uh, they are also providing that how many times this paper particular paper is cited by others so and there are <clears throat> another tools like altmetrix it is also there all the metrics is nothing altmetrix is nothing but it is nowadays we are using all these social medias so how many times our article is being viewed by uh, in social media how many likes we found so based on this article impact of the article is counted and for that you use this impact story so you can also create you can also register for the impact story site link is also there even the scopus is also providing you the metric facility so once you have a scopus author id don't bother about all the metrics they are also providing the facility for you then this plum analytics is also there uh, is also there for that is how many number of like blogs twitter facebook's like wikipedia and social bookmarks are also there so how many times that is mentioned on the social media it is calculated based on all metrics so here what kind of data has been measured like usage is measured mentioned is measured social medias like how many likes you found on that particular like facebook or linkedin or other how many times that is tweeted your work is tweeted how many times your work has been received in the web of science then publon or pubmed scopus databases and how many number of times that is captured or you can say share the other sites that is in Mendeley, like Mendeley, all these are the reference management tools. So how many times it is bookmarked? So based on that, 
we are calculating the all matrix so there are some fundamental things to publish we have to take care about before publishing and so before publishing we should take care about the author affiliation so this is very important author affiliation is very important like we are writing dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university affiliation so that affiliation we are writing dr bamu university so knowing about all these things it's okay but now all the faculty members they are publishing the paper and they decided and they should take care about the author affiliation so author affiliation once you decide that this is the type of author affiliation if you want your paper to be published by dr bamu you have to follow that only if you want to publish your paper by dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university then you have to follow that like uh, the name of the uh, author name of the author sometimes what happen i'll take my example i'm writing my paper by the name vaishali khaparde sometimes khaparde vaishali or sometimes vaishali sk so we should avoid all this author name ambiguity it will raise the accessibility of your work sometimes what happen if you search in the google scholar by vaishali so it will uh, come but sometimes if you are searching by vs khaparde then it won't come so we should avoid all this author ambiguity once you decided your name may not be changed okay for this author name we have to write in all paper consistently so we have to take care about the journal selection also once you paper once you publish your paper in a very good journal then automatically it will enhance the research visibility but although we have also take to take care about publishing we have to post that particular thing like a full text paper sometimes if copyright issues are there we have to only provide the abstract of the paper and so for journal selection you have to take care about the ugc care list of the journal or the master journal list also from the web of science and the scopus and if possible you can publish it in open access platform so that the research visibility can be more so there are different ways to be boost your research visibility we will see how to manage your research profile with various research profiling tools so we will go into the depth of that utilize open access resources and if possible publish in the open access platform then deposit your publication in the institutional research archive for example your college is having the uh, digital library then you can also post the paper there or if you have an institutional repository or archive you can also post so that others can also see also promote your research online with the help of social media so we have to also use this social media for promoting our research then academic social networks are also there so there are seven ways from where we can enhance our research visibility we will go into the depth of that how to create and manage your research visibility or research profile first way of boosting your research visibility that is to use this orchid id scopus author id researcher id so whenever you use all these research ids you should also take care about the author's name ambiguity your profile should not be blank once all the publication you have to add it and whatever publications research profiling tools you make sure it should be linked with the other profiling tools it should be updated so whatever research ids or web showing that is whatever scopus id you have to take care even you have to take care about the web of science uh, id so 
that is google scholar id also and it is like the aadhar so aadhar card which we are using for anything or anywhere the aadhar card now it is necessary so we can say that our orchid id is like a aadhar for every research researcher or every faculty member they should have the orchid id so linkedin linkedin is also there research gate id is also there academia is also there social networking and academic network is also there and reference management tools they are also providing the facility of research profiling so if you are using the mendeley of or if you are using the zotero then create your profile so that whatever literature you are searching it can be bookmarked means institutional repository with one database is also there and altmetric tool is also there so all these research profiling tool you have to your research id link to your research id so that your research can be visible and automatically it will enhance your research visibility so how to create we will go into the depth this is how to create first we will see the orchid then the scopus then the researcher id with a blonds or web of science and then google scholar profile so i hope they most of the faculty members as well as the research scholars or the librarians they are having their google scholar profile so creating profile with various tools so let us see one by one first is that is orchid it is nothing but it is a open researcher and contributor id it is a open researcher and contributor id it is a unique identifier for all the research scholars and the researchers it will promote the discovery of the publication across multiple platform so it also helps you to improve discoverability and recognition so anyone who participates in the research this scholarship can register an orchid id so for themselves free of charge you can use the same id forever even if your name changes or move your new or you move to the different organization or different discipline it gives you the 16 digit unique number so that connects you and your research activities throughout your career if you are in the middle stage or initial stage of your research then first have the orchid id or create your orchid id it is a 16 digit unique number and they are providing and based on that even if you are submitting a research pro proposal if you are submitting your research pro proposal so without the orchid id they won't take your publications so like this it is very compulsory for the research scholars you have to create your orchid id so what are the benefits of the orchid id it will record all your works like employment details whatever awards uh, you are uh, you have gained and whatever research grant you have received throughout your ent entire career it is recorded the research data can be linked up and it can be used by the publisher or the database or the organization so it is being required by the publisher or databases or the organization or you can say funders also sometimes what happened to avoid the name ambiguity we have to use this orchid id if you have an orchid id then automatically you will be identified by the publishers you will be identified by the funders also like funding agencies also we have to avoid the name ambiguity and for that for that purpose we have to use the orchid id it is a unique id for the researcher and to avoid the name indicating so this is the workflow for managing your the 
managing the research profiles if you all have these research ideas this is the workflow so just su suggesting this workflow first clean up your scopus author uh, id why to clean up your uh, scopus author profile because 10 years back if you have created your scopus profile so that time we don't know exactly because that time uh, it may be our initial stage of research or that time we didn't knew more about these ideas so we have created but now if you are knowing all these things then you have to create your research ideas very carefully second thing that create your create your uh, orchid id first and then whatever orchid id database you have it it can be embedded with the other uh, research profiling tools you can also create web of science researcher id and how to create the web of science researcher id your I, orchid id just go to the orchid id dot org so there is a facility for the researcher link so there is for the organization you can also register for the organization uh, you can also register as an individual so if you click on for the researcher then you will get this thing you have to just create or register now they will ask you about the email id then your password even pa whatever password you want to take just sign it you can also sign it with various social medias like facebook and you can sign it if you have a google account then you can also sign it with the google account also how to fill this form they are asking only the personal information like your first name last name your primarily mail additional mail and uh, all this so there is a visibility setting also you can do the visibility setting to everyone so for what purpose we are creating to enhance your research visibility so we have also take care about that so that everyone can see your profile so this is the purpose of particular link so this is my orchid id so it is a 16 uh, number digital uh, digital numbers are there it is a very unique id and once you create your orchid id then you will get this screen like display your id on the other id's public record print preview and all this so get the qr codes so these are the qr codes you can also generate your qr codes and here once you fill all this data like your biography uh, your employability your educational and qualification awards and everything you have to include related with your research it is a personal whether it is your personal database or uh, so then this qr codes with your personal website you can embed it this qr codes with your personal web website or the institutional website also so you can just copy the qr code whatever codes they are providing you you can paste it in your personal website so that it can be embedded with the orchid id you can also paste it in your personal website so i request all the faculty members all the research students all the librarians to create your orchid id so this is the one way of enhancing your research visibility to others and it is like everywhere we need this orchid id in our research so this is the next is scopus author id so how to create this scopus author id if you have a subscribed scopus database then good so based on that also you can create your author id but if you don't have a subscribed database of scopus then just go to the scopus.com free uh, free lookup 
it is a service from this corpus and you can search your author name if you have a published paper in this corpus database then it will search if you don't have then also you can create your id so how to create your id with this corpus author id they will ask you about the author name your publication means your details and they will also ask you about the orchid id detail so once you feed the data mean a unique digital id 16 number then automatically all the data will be extracted from the orchid id to the scopus so it is having a very good facility that is very good for the research scholars you can also search for the author like just i have taken my name only for searching so if you search for the uh, name then you will get the two documents so there are h index if you search uh, so h index is also there and <clears throat> so details it will be showing you all the details the graphical presentation of how many number of citations you have means citations you have got how many number of documents you have in scopus they will provide you all the graphical uh, description or presentation of your profile so that is a option also that is edit your profile you can also add the profile means edit the profile you can also connect it to the orchid id you can also set up the alert it is very good facility some of the databases they are providing so they are providing this facility so again there are six steps suppose you are connecting means you are creating your scopus id and if you have an orchid id then you don't need to feed the data in this scopus id so you can just connect it with the orchid id and whatever data you have in the orchid id automatically it will be synchronized with scopus so there is no need to feed the data so there are six steps select profile and that is select profile name review publications review profile send the author id and send the publications so in this sixth stage your orchid data id data can be transferred or synchronized with this corpus so these are the simple steps that you can see here that various you have to just type so you have related with the particular author so whatever publications we have in this corpus and orchid it will automatically come here you have to review it whether it is your publication or not whether your publication you have to click to the right button so that you can choose your publications so here you can link all the documents whatever documents are submitted in this corpus you can link it with the orchid id so next is how to create web of science researcher id if you web of science researcher id that is you have to sign you have to uh, sign it first on the researcher uh, web of science researcher id then you have to sign it to my cite scientific citation matrix and whatever peer reviewing you are doing like journal editing whatever you are doing it is very easy to maintain this profile with the web of science or researcher id you can also showcase your research output and it is very easy to add the publication from the uh, research uh, web of science or orchid id or any digital object identifier or by file upload you can also automatically upload the uh update your profile you can also automatically update your profile with the institutional affiliation so the next is google scholar 
so this is web of mine i have taken my example that is orchid id a web of science profile next is how to create google scholar id so i think many faculty members they might be using this google scholar so google scholar it also provides you the facility of how to create the public profile and what will be the citation matrix or even generally the i10 index and h index so if you have a google scholar profile then it is a very good thing but if you don't have still you can create your profile with the my citation option so the so based on my citation you can just click on that if you having the google's account and complete all the steps though these steps are very simple you can have to add the publication automatically if you have an electronic publication then it will automatically extract the data from the electronic resources you can also if you want to add you can add your publication in the google's profile but it will give you the sign to citation matrix and nowadays for accreditation aid agencies like nac and other like aict they are also asking you the citation matrix profile of the researcher or the uh, faculty members so for this purpose they are providing you all these researcher ids they are providing you ready made facility what will be the citation what will be the h index what will be the i10 index so once you receive the citation for your work it will automatically update with the google scholar so therefore it is very necessary for the faculty members to have the google scholar so once your work it will be automatically updated with the google scholar so, so hence it is necessary for the faculty members to have the google scholar matrix because obviously it will increase your visibility it will increase the visibility of the work and it, it will also discover your profile and it will also discover the profile of your work with the world and it will be and it is very easy to maintain it is very easy to update your publication so therefore this is the gateway to measure the impact of your publication so if you are not having the google scholar i once again request all the faculty members to have your google scholar id so you can see here this is my google scholar id whatever publications i have for example this is the first publication so this is the first in rank how many times this particular i article is being cited uh, by the others so that is 57 times it is cited by the others it will calculate the impact factor like h index particularly you can see the citations 426 i have received 426 citation h index is 11 and i10 index is 13 so based on your publication whatever publication is cited by the others it will automatically calculate it so for showing it to the nac accreditation agencies or other agencies you can show this profile and now they is they asking what will be the google scholar matrix so what will be this focus ids so all these research ids they are asking so if you have an institutional repository of your college or of your institution or even for the subject based archives you can also submit the paper in the subject based archive for library science we have an elis or reprint for other subject if you have r for like engineering and pharmacy you can also search for this database like ROI, roir registry of open access repositories and open dor and is there you can search for your repositories you can submit all your uh, publications and if the copyright policy is permitting you to to submit the paper in the archives then you can submit it if the copyright uh, policy is not permitting you to submit the full text paper then you can also submit the abstract of the paper 
so based on their policy they are providing you the research visibility so nowadays you can see this social media like you can use blog twitter and linkedin account so these are the tools to improve the research visibility of your research if you have a linkedin account if you don't have you can also see that how to create the linkedin account how to create the research scholar research gate account so i am insisting that academic social networks are also there like academia edu is also there a research gate is also there zotero mandalay is there for the reference management tools they are providing you to create your profile online so you have to create your online profile so that you can use all these profiles for increasing your research visibility so how to create uh, in mendeley uh, just type the mendeley.com and create a free account you can use this software for your research for purpose also for writing the references and bibliography and for citation you can use this mendeley software it is very good software and they are also providing you a mendeley profile so they are also providing you this mendeley profile they are also taking care of this orchid ids and scopus id personal websites if you have an orchid id scopus id and if you are giving the link to mendeley profile then it will automatically calculate then you can use all these tools like mendeley profile so obviously it will enhance your research visibility so you can also create the account for research gate it is very easy to join free link is there you can join on it and you can have your account and you can just fill in the information and you can have the account and sign it there so this is the home page of you have to fill in this information sign it so this is my uh home page is my id so sometimes the ugc or aict they are also asking about the rgs id so you can also create the rgs id and very good thing here for the rgs that they are also making the network similar like if you are interested in bibliometric study so automatically if you click on this bi bibliometrics then so automatically your network will be connected with the others so those who are having the similar interest they are also providing you some discussions forums and all thing everything is there you can also communicate with the professionals you can connect with the professionals they are also providing you this statistical graphical statistics they are providing you how many number of research you have many uh, you have got how many citations you have got and what will be your research interest then who is doing and in the same line of your research so like this they are providing you the score sometimes the accreditation agencies are also asking you about the rg score so so that you can observe that also so you can see here my research interest score is 134.8 of mine but you can also create your own research profile so that you can also use the academia.edu so the 69% boost you can find the 69% boost in the citation over the 5 years so one study in the plus is showing that if you are using the academia the, there is chances of getting the citations of your publications so more you you can have an account in academia.edu but there are some limitations of disseminating your work online if you are disseminating your work 
like publications so there are three category categories that okay. is preprint is also there you may be knowing uh, about preprint then post print and published version so preference before publication like we submit the article to the other social medias we also we have to take care about post printers so even published version we can have we have we can submit so you can see sherpa romeo it is also uh, online platform they are also guiding you about the copyright and self archiving policy if your paper is published in the journals in some papers or some journals they are allowing you to publish in the other online media so you can use this share for online policy and you can use this creative common commons dot org so they are providing you uh, so see like something you may be somewhere in some paper you are finding out so that is creative commons so they are providing you for disseminating your work online you can also use this ultimatric tools like previously i have told you about the impact story so this is uh ultimatric tool you can use this to track your online impact to track your online impact of your work you can also use this ultimatric book marketplace so this impact then impact story how to create a, it in, in a very simple there are very simple steps how to create or how to get register for your uh, for this only thing is you have to sign it to the orchid id so you have to sign it create your orchid profile it must it is must for this and everywhere orchid is asking about everywhere it is asking about the orchid profile so create your research uh, orchid id then you can also synchronize it with the orchid id data and the ultimatrix store uh, impact story also so that your article if it is available means if it is shared by someone in the social media then it will be calculated your impact factor is will be calculated you can use this book market all these are used for calculating the impact story impact of the author then comes plumex metrics it is also there you can also use it it is not necessary every tool you have to use it for one purpose you can use one tool with one databases there is a very good initiative in flipnet amdabad that is vidwan from our india they will also identify the peer reviewers of the article and then research proposal if you have a uh, like home page with vidwan in flipdat.ac.in you have to use it you can register yourself as a faculty members they will review your profile your publications and after that they will also give you the uh, id vidwan id so this is mine id if you have registration then automatically your citations will be enhanced so this is so this is my id and all these you have to upload your and all these educational qualifications your honors your awards your doctoral thesis and professional body membership of the com uh, committee so whatever you have uh, your academia you have to upload here sir the meeting ka puri gela ka so you have to upload all your academia here the upsc se par so next is irins that is indian research information network system and and he immediately chalisa 
it is also the initiative of inflipnet and it also provide you some academic identity they are also providing you the visualization of research impact so if you are having this iri ns account based on that they will also provide you the network diagram so just as there is a time uh, limitations so just i want to sum up with some of the suggestions for librarians to provide citations search footprint service by using various databases create your own profiles provide research support services publish the quality uh, papers in the peer review journals don't publish in predatory journals so use some plagiarism softwares even some open source softwares create your own brand research brand and so you can have your research profile for enhancing your research visibility and this is now this is the right time to update yourself and whatever publications we have it it should be visible to all so that our visibility and as well as our institutional visibility can also be enhanced so don't forget to acknowledge all the authors all the websites all the show, social media portals and all the academic networks so once again uh, i thank once again i would like to thank the organizer uh, for giving me an opportunity to present my views thank you one and all thank you madam thank sorry you. for the inconvenience <laughs> You so, are. I hope, so I hope you all have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thank Certainly, you. we are enjoying your lecture. We are lagging behind the time. So, thank you, madam, for this wonderful lecture. It really thought-provoking and useful to the research resource. Uh, sorry, researchers. Thank you for your support, also, madam. Now the session is open for the question answer. I request all the delegates, if you have any questions, please unmute your mic and ask a question. Is there any question? Hello. Is anybody having question? Okay. Thank you, madam. There is uh, no questions. So we will move forward. Thank you all for the active part uh, participation. Now we will move forward to validatory address. I request Dr. Sonal Ubale to introduce the speaker at Validity Dr. K. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Close this uh, slide, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Madam, go slide show close kara bol ke bolo, madam. Yes, sir. Slide show. Presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Respected dignitaries of the function, good afternoon, one, on, uh, one and all. I'm here to introduce our three speaker at Washington function of this national webinar. Dr. K. Viranjani Vibu is a highly qualified person who has acquired an MCOM, MLIS, DGL, AGD, LAN, PhD, and NET. He has been holding a studious position like librarian and the central library of National Institute of Technology, Varangal. He has more than 30 25 years of professional experience in the field of library and information science. His contribution to scholarly communication includes 42 books and about 182 articles. He is a member of Board of Studies, Academic Councils, and secondly, Board of many universities in India, and PhD adjudicator and external examiner and expert in selection committees for several universities. He is a resource person in various academic staff colleges in the country. 
and delivered pictures in various pictures in various so areas of the research project and completed six research projects and, and participated in more than 125 national and international conferences workshops and seminars and, 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 and under his guidance eight candidates were awarded mc degree and six candidates phd degree he is currently the president of association of agriculture librarians and environmentalists of india and life member of various learned social societies He served as the chief editor of the Indian Journal of Agriculture Librarians and Information Services. Sir has visited many foreign countries as part of his academic and research assignments. He has been awarded USS HLB IJILS Param Bhushan B. B. Shukla Millennium Award for excellence in 2007. He has awarded certificate of appreciation for outstanding contribution in developing Krishi Kosha in the libraries. the ARLS and the PG grants project from the director general ICAR and national director NAI IARI New Delhi he has been honored with the prestigious lifetime achievement award by the association of agricultural librarians and documentalists of india one of the oldest professional societies in india for his three decades of dedicated service to agricultural librarianship leadership quality commitment and service with highest Standard of Excellence for the year 2021. Sir has received the Best Paper Award in the International Conference organized by International Library and Information Science Society. His research grade score is 3.47 and Google Scholar H Index is 5. Sir has, Sir has many achievements to his credit, which I am not able to pronounce due to restriction of time. So now I request Sir to deliver his valedictory address. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, professor in andhra pradesh and the maharashtra and uh, my young friend dr suresh jangi dr sunita bajwe dr so sonal and the organizing secretary mrs joshna and other faculty member participants library professionals and other uh, people those who are attending this con and this uh, webinar you know that earlier people are publishing papers in the isa number afterwards the organizing administrators are asking a nag Uh, people or even uh, IRA people, uh, this IR um, national institution ranking people are asking that they should publish papers in the uh, UGC care list, or Scopus, and Web of Science, other other things also there. See now the quality is important, not quantity. See how many papers you are published. If you maybe publish hundred papers, but your H index is only uh, two, three. It is not important. If you are published ten papers, your H index and citations are more than ten H index. That is a good quality of this one. See, Madam already uh, spoken about different uh, uh, things. How to improve your uh, H index or uh, how to improve your citations in different. Uh, Tools are there. Madam is explained about that one. See, now I will deal only that one before publishing your paper. Before what you have to see that one. Which journal you are publishing you, your uh, paper and how it will be counted. How to detect that one. Nowadays India has become the predatory journals. How to maintain our research ethics. That is the very important of this one. And uh, you know that before you are publishing a paper, you should see that one. Uh, after selecting journal, what is the impact factor of the journal? What is the H index of the journal? And what whether it is covered in the UGC care list or it is indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. And who are the editors of this one? And uh, what is the review process of this uh, journal? And how much time it is take? All the things seem to taken into the consideration. You know that now India is uh, facing lot of problems in research ethics, especially because of the plagiarism and other things. A uh, lot of uh, <laughs> journals are coming. Old journals are coming. Now we'll discuss one by one. See, madam, it is visible now. Madam. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. It is visible. 
Yeah, global we are publication science and engineering. You know, approximately 35,000 journals are published regularly every year. 22,000 of them are ISIR Scopus indexed journals. The total number of papers published annually exceeds 2.5 million. And uh, for your kind information, you can see that uh, over 50% of research papers is used no citations. 90% readers glance through the content list only. Only 5% open the journals to review through the uh, title only. Less than 2% scientists read the abstracts and index only. Then less than 1% read the uh, rest of the papers. See, nowadays our, uh, our research scholars are faculty. They are based upon the abstract only. They are preparing papers and review of literature because of the full paper reading is reduced now. Earlier, uh, like I think 20, 25 years back, when the people are reading the full paper and preparing the abstracts. Now the ready-made in IT environment, in the latest developments, if you type in Google, we will we'll get the abstracts of so many papers. And you will go and some database, you will type that one, you will get there using same. That's why uh, full paper readings are decreased in now everything. And you can see scientific misconduct and uh, falsification and fabrication. The scientific misconduct is defined as a fabrication, falsification, or plagiarism in the proposing, performing, or reviewing research. See, I will go a little uh, speed because of the time uh, constraint is there. And another definition of research misconduct is given as any behavior by the researchers, whether intentional or not, that fails to scrupulously respect to high scientific and ethical standards also see wantedly if you are doing that well, nowadays we are very uh, busy to producing the what is the new papers see people papers count only people are seeing that one so we, you, even you can find some papers what happened paste and cut also you can see that one cut and paste system also we are following so many journals we are seeing that types of misconduct generally what happened the pals, uh, falsification means manipulating research materials equipment or process or changing or omitting data or results such that the research is not accurately represented in the research records also. This can include altering the data results in a way where the research is not accurate. That means we are giving the false data, what you are collected data to satisfy other people to manipulate the data also. Example of falsification is manipulation of blood pressures, reading the drug trials, evaluating hypertension in pregnancy also. So many things we are seeing that one to agency to satisfy that uh, we are conducting some surveys and other things we are manipulating the data. Then uh, fabrication means making up data or results and recording or reporting them also. It may be noted that even just intent of the publishing fabrication data is a misconduct. So when data you are fabricated, you want to make it a positive and uh, then it will satisfy other organizations, funding agencies, which also become the, uh, one of the ethical issues of this. It is simply reporting something which does not exist also. Then application means omission of critical data results. See if anything controversy there, you are omitting that one, you are taking only positive data, it becomes also publication. Reporting positive outcomes and omitting the adverse reports of this one also. Unethical research is starting research without obtaining ethical committee permissions, like in a medical and other fields. So they should get the ethical uh, permissions to when they are doing the research work also. Ethical issues in research, the conflict of interest. It can be defined as a set of conditions in which professional judgment concerning a primary interest such as the patient's welfare of this one that means your personal interest you will do that one you are investing the interest only you are doing the research and bias interest also we will call them also if authors is employs a company and conducting research and the products of the company without declaring the conflict a general public may be misguided with this basis this is sometimes what happens when they are doing some trials when they are doing new products they will do western interest of this one then responsible authorship also one thing is a common honor honorly authorship is there he has not contributed anything but he will include his name also there that is a inappropriate authorship also without any contribution also gives that one and the ghost writing also something sometimes you will take some people are writing that one and will the name also included that one higher writing higher what is called uh, hiring of the authors also comes under the ethical issues of the research also the hiring author is when you write an article that is officially credited to the another uh, person's authors also. Then ghost uh, authorship also. Inter intentional inclusion of name of reputed senior authors who was not uh, contributed to the research and publication. This is done to increase the chance of acceptance by general editors. Also. Some of the things we have to avoid to follow some research. Mm -hmm. 
publication bias and misconduct positive trials are more likely to be conducted and published quickly some trials which do not have the positive result may will be published suppression of data sometimes will suppress the data so that one to get the positive and satisfy the funding also peer assassination making entirely unsuit unsubstantiated claims and making the baseless and unvariable conclusions entirely related to the data then uh, quoting fake references and our quote which you do not support the arguments your topic is a different uh, and your research is different you are quoting some other argument other references also comes on premature publications uh, before completing the project before completing your thesis you are publishing also comes in the current generation new uh, news travels across the closing fact is one mass media implies that you can read the entire world also however it could not be uh, correct due to the scientific process also and the remnant publications nowadays we are seeing lot of remnant publications academicians and researchers uh, researchers is an institution of highly learning research institutions are industry research the research finding dissemination in the form of the publication and re reviewed also see the 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 main reason is that one now they want more publications and other things are getting the redundant publications also the publisher perish phenomena puts intention uh, intense pressure on academicians to publish because quality uh, quantity and not necessary to produce great advantages you know that you want to become the professor associate professor you want to get, uh, get the some academic administrative work they are required more uh, papers also then they are hurry to publish that one they are not seeing that one, what type of general is it is a it is a focus general or it is a predatory general or it is a cruel general something this thing should be observed that one duplicate and overlapping publications also there See, in duplicate publication, the paper usually differs more. Slightly change to the title, abstract, and all other the others. The same paper publishing in small changes also comes under the duplication and overlapping publication. The text is usually identical or nearly so. The remnant publication there is usually a somewhat different textual slant in the body of the papers and the words. The salami salami slicing means the same paper we are producing, uh, same research producing three four papers or three papers six also there. Ethical issue is also comes on that one. Also, that is three three publishing. Nowadays we are seeing that one. India is about editorial publication. Editorial publication they don't. They have a uh, good review process, pre-reviewing the process also. They don't have a physical office also. They will charge and overnight they will disappear also. So many people we are seeing that one. Different they have seen in the um, uh, the um, this one Nam uh, NAC uh, DVB member. I have seen that so many papers they will give. But when we are verifying the um, UGC care list or scopus and web of science, they will find that only 20% of the people. Because uh, the paper they will see that one at the time they will give it is the published, it is indexed in the UGC or Scopus. But actually, that is not indexed. That, one. that problems are coming this one. And the period to generals in India, why it does not mean? Uh, another uh, study that reveals that one is that uh, reveals that what the study reveals that is. Uh, another study reveals that more than half of the papers, uh, 25, 50 percent, are by the authors from the government run and the private organizations. They are publishing that one also. See, 18 percent of them are from a private universities and institutions, and 15 percent of them from the state universities, and 3 percent of them from the central universities. Like that, you can see the interesting note that 11 percent of the papers were from uh, India's leading government funding institutions of ICR, ICCSR, 15 percent, NIT is 11 percent, and 9 percent in NIT. See how the people or publishers are cheating that one. Uh, to create that one, that is a genuine publication of another thing. See, the majority of publication, 51 percent of the military, uh, military publications are from the life sciences also. There it is. And uh, cloned generals, you have seen nowadays the big problem is that one you cannot find that one which is a real general, which is a clone general. See, they will maintain the same uh, title, they maintain the same ISSN number also, they will maintain. When you go on the website, small changes will be there in a sense. That is a misleading of this one also. Generals. Should, when we are publishing articles, we should be careful. The drone generals and other things also. Then now we call the hijacked generals also coming that one. They will hijack the title and they will see the drone general develops a mirror image of the repetitive generals, attracts more articles than the predatory generals. Then uh, you can see compared to military generals, it is uh, difficult to identify the clone generals. And uh, another uh, term used for clone generals is hijacked generals. Hijacked generals are fake or uh, duplicate. 
uh, website of genuine journals using the title ISN and other information of this. See, we should be careful when we are publishing, where the library people plays an important role to guide the faculty members when they are publishing the papers also. We should, give them, uh, we should uh, uh, counsel them, see where uh, we, they are publishing, which are the predatory journals, which are the hijacked journals, which are the clone journals and other things. And the second thing nowadays we are facing that one is a plagiarism. See, so many things, see, so many people also uh, affected that one. Uh, even uh, UGC is given regulations. So anybody can ask the th thesis awarded within the 10 years. If the, any plagiarism, similarities is there, they will be suffering this one also plagiarism. See, it is a, one survey is given by the Turnitin 20, 2015 survey of teachers. Uh, main form of plagiarism that is uh, students committees that one, submitting someone's work as their own and taking passages from their own previous work without add, adding the citation that is called self citation self plagiarism pre reporting someone's work without properly citing that one using quotations but not uh, citing the sources and interviewing various sources together in the work without citing and uh, citing some but not all passages that would be cited meddling uh, together cited and uncited sections of the pieces providing proper citations but failing to change the uh, structure and uh, wording of the borrowed ideas and inaccurate citing sources also really too heavy on the people's work fails to bring the original thoughts into the desktop see where 80 percent we are taking others for only 20 percent of the work also comes under the plagiarism also see what is the plagiarism spectrum is there you can see using sources too closely when paraphrasing and uh, copying work from the source without a citation and uh, reusing works we have done for an uh, earlier assignment and uh, working with uh, other students to complete uh, an uh, individual task uh, buying stealing or borrowing others works and paying someone to do your work so this is the uh, overall what plagiarism attracts also you can see so don't think that plagiarism means only test it is also image plagiarism will be there video plagiarism will be there and audio plagiarism is there nowadays we are seeing the royalties and the cinema other things also when you are using one image we should be careful whether it is a, uh, any patents are there any copyrights are there we should be careful of this one objectives of the ugc regulation regulations so the ugc is given the regulation that want to maintain academic integrity and other things also misconduct plagiarism they are given some regulations and uh, similarity checkup they are given at uh, the similarity checkup they are given uh, it is a uh, exclusiveness and that means the thesis they will not on paper they will not uh, from uh, title to reference they will not check that one they will check only some issues they are exempted all quoted words either uh, falling under the domain public domain and reproduced with all nece uh, necessary permission and other things all references bibliography tables and this one all small similarities of the mirror nature and all genetic terms and laws and standard symbols and standard equations and uh, zero tolerance where we uh, normally will we should check up of the plagiarism that uh, they are given some items where the zero tolerance will be there, like an abstract hypothesis uh, summary uh, then observations results conclusions and recommendations where they will follow zero tolerance of the core areas they will follow the plagiarism and you can see what is the exemptions given up to 10 percent they are excluded and uh, similarly about 10 to 40 percent is their level one level uh, two is the 40 to 60 percent and uh, level three is the 60 percent and other things also there so you can see level three what is the punishment they are giving the students also such students shall not be given any mass or paid for the plagiarism scripts and shall be asked to submit a revised script within a stipulated time period not exceeding six months and uh, if the level two is there like 40 to 60 percent students shall not be given any mass or paid for plagiarism scripts and shall be asked to submit revise the script after a time period of one year about not exceeding 18 months service and it is a similarities of level three such so students shall not be given any marks or paid for the plagiarism scripts and is a registration for the process of speaking cancer see if you are committed higher that one also they will give this one see it is not only applicable to students it is a faculty when they are writing the research paper they found that one plagiarism so they have their own sometimes they will stop the increment sometimes they will stop the guiding the students also their punishments they are described by the ugc also there how to avoid plagiarism second one see one first one is you can have the paraphrase see if you find information that is perfect for your research paper uh, read it and put into your own words see first you have to read the paper then your language your words you should write that one you can avoid some paraphrase. but we have to give the references of this one. Then cite, citing is one of the effective ways to avoid plagiarism. Follow the document formatting guidelines used for your institution. This usually 
uh, adds to that one also. Then quoting, when quoting a source, use quote exactly the way it appears. No one wants to misquote that. Term. Most institutions are high learning institutions. On the black quotes, or quote of 40 words or more, it can be avoided from the plagiarism also. That you then citing quotes, your quotes citing a quote can be uh, different than the citing paraphrased material also. This practice usually involves the addition of the page numbers or a paragraph numbers in case of the web content. Citing your own uh, material, self plagiarism to avoid self plagiarism, you can have quote your own material previous, uh, your uh, papers and other things also. Referencing one of the uh, strongest uh, avoiding the tool is that one reference. What are the items you are referred? What are the contents you are taken? Ideas of this one you should refer. Then only you can avoid the plagiarism also. So then uh, uh, so it by plagiarism, you know that uh, Dr. V. S. Rajput V. C. Man University of Uttarakhand so asked to resign the post by V. C. due to plagiarism charges. Dr. Deepak Pantel, former Vice Chancellor of Delhi University, arrested for plagiarism, charged by a professor of survey, later released on bail. And Dr. Chandra Krishnamurthy, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, Central University, found which dismissed from the post due to the plagiarism. So, not only in India, see, great, great world leaders are affected, leaders accused for the plagiarism, also, you can see. Yes, a President Obama also at that time for taking hope and opportunity to speak from similar that one, Bushkin, that is, and President of uh, Russia also for topping of this one for his thesis also there. And uh, the German education it was resigned for being taken from the doctorate because of plagiarism also. Then uh, some big writers, you know, Henry, uh, Harry Potter, like other people also affected. See, we should be careful when we are preparing a paper or thesis also there is. See, earlier there is no tools. Now this a lot of tools are there. Even uh, infinite is given with and other things. So, so many open source plagiarism checking the similar checking software are available. And uh, see, with this I conclude that one. And you should be careful when you are publishing your papers. When you are publishing papers, you should be see that one. We generally having the good, good uh, what is called uh, high impact factor citations, and uh, whether the generalist cited in a Scopus Web of Science generally included in this one, what is called a UGC care list, whether the generalist uh, uh, cloned general, hijacked general, or predatory general, so we should take care of all these things. Then only we'll get the good score or uh, what is called good H index and other things. After selecting this one, publishing. Next, what Madam explained, the different tools are there. You can uh, update your this one. You can upload in the research gate. You can upload in Google Scholars, or you can upload in the uh, some different repositories. Then we'll get the good visibility. And finally, I'm very thankful to all the organizers for giving this opportunity. Thank you, Madam. If any questions are there, you can ask. Okay, Madam. Okay, Thank you very much, sir, for this wonderful lecture. We are grateful for your time and effort and your expertise. Now we move towards the end of the webinar. At the end of this event, I take this opportunity to propose my vote of thanks. I extend my sincere gratitude towards the president of MLNG Society, Honorable Dr. Ado, sorry, Honorable Advocate J.K. Vasarikar sir and Honorable Secretary Advocate Kalprata Pati Paraswarkar Madam for their motivation and support. I would like to express sincere gratitude towards the keynote speaker, Honorable Dr. Suresh Jangi sir for his informative and thoughtful provoking address. At the outset, I thank today's resource person, Honorable Dr. Vaishali Khapade Madam Ma'am, we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. It is very useful in our research work. We are grateful for your time and support. I would also like to thank our distinguished speaker, Honorable Dr. K. Virenjanelu, sir, for his excellent resourceful speech. I express my profound gratitude to our Honorable Principal, Dr. Vasudha Puret, madam, for your motivation and support. I also extend my gratitude towards respected Dr. Surita Bashpe ma'am for her timely support and inspiration. I express my special thanks to Dr. Meenal, Dr. Sonal, Madhuri, and Kiran madam. I would like to thank all the respected delegates for your presence here. A special thanks to teaching and not teaching uh, staff of our institution. 
I would like to thank those who have directly or indirectly contributed to this event. Thank you all for your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam. 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 There are no questions. Congratulations, madam. Yes, somebody want to ask question? Anil. Anil Dhonde, you want to ask question? Dhonde, sir? I think there is no question, sir. Okay, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you madam. Thank you, madam. We will close this meeting. Thank Shall you. Shall we close, ma'am? Thank you. Yes, 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 you can close. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.